In this video, I'll show you how you can use ChatGPT for coding to 10x your productivity. When used properly, ChatGPT is an incredible tool and you don't want to get left behind while everyone else harnesses the power of AI. Instead, Become one with the AI, become a cyborg. Make sure to watch until the end of the video because I'll be sharing seven tips and tricks that I've learned from a lot of trial and error. These seven different ways of using ChatGPT will take your coding skills to the next level. First, we need to understand the basics of ChatGPT. ChatGPT does not have any knowledge or logic. ChatGPT simply looks at a massive amount of data and picks the next best word to output. It's similar to how phones suggest words while you type on the keyboard, just much more advanced. This means that it may not always give a correct or logical answer, but it will give something that sounds right. Okay, number one, code snippets. Here's our prompt. Write a Python script for scraping web data. Okay, this is already pretty incredible. Instead of having to Google around to figure out exactly how to use or get started on a project, you just simply ask ChatGPT and it does it for you. Now let's say we want to modify this script to download all of the image from the site. incredible. You may have to modify some things here and there, but this is a great starting point and it saves you a lot of time. And now number two, we have adding documentation. So let's say we wanted to add documentation for this. We simply say write documentation and watch it work. Incredible. We have an overview, prerequisites, how we need to install the libraries. We have how to use the script. We have how to modify the script. And it even says the limitations. So absolutely incredible. You may have to modify some things in this documentation, but this gets maybe 80% to 90% of the work done for you. Okay, number three is finding bugs. So we have this Python method, add underscores. And the idea is to add underscores in between each character of the word. Now you can see it goes through the range length word and it adds the underscores. But there is an issue, a bug in this code. And let's see if ChatGPT can find it. So we'll say find a bug in the following code. And it says the bug in the code is that the loop in the function at underscores is not concatenating the characters properly. It is only returning the last character of the input word followed by an underscore. And you can see it's actually right here. So it's saying that new word, it's just becoming word at i plus the underscore. So it actually fixed that. So in our case here, if we were to call at underscores with hello, in our original code, it would output o underscore because new word would eventually equal o with an underscore. But it fixed that and realized that. And so it added this plus and now the function should work correctly. The one thing it also interpreted is that we don't want to have the last underscore at the very end. And so it actually removes the last underscore. So really helpful for finding bugs. Again, it may not be always correct, but it can give you a good idea of what the bug is or where a bug could be. And before moving on, if you enjoyed the video so far and you found it helpful, please give a like and a subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Okay, number four, is explaining code. Now there is this famous kata that I'm gonna be pasting in here. It's quite convoluted, but ChatGPT will be able to explain the code pretty well. So let's say explain the following code. And so we paste the big kata in there and it's this really long class with a bunch of if then statements, very hard to read as a human. Let's see how ChatGPT does here. So it's saying that the code defines a class named Gilded Rose. It has an initializer, takes in three arguments. There's a tick method that updates the quality and days remaining attributes of an item, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a great way to get an idea of what legacy code is doing, or maybe a library that you're interested in. You can just pass it into ChatGPT and it can give you an idea. Again, it may not be 100% correct in everything it says, but it's a good way to get started. And now what we can do is we can say, improve the code. And it says to improve the code, here are some suggestions. Split the tick method into smaller, most focused methods that perform a single task. Very good, good refactoring idea. Use more descriptive names for the variables and methods. Yes, use constants or enums for the names of the items instead of hard-coded strings. Add unit tests to ensure that the code works as expected. So now it created an item name class, which just has the constants that we're interested in. Still has the gilded rows class with the same initializer. And now split up that huge, huge method of tick into smaller methods. 
we have update quality and it calls a private method update quality and update cell in and then it does some logic here and you can see this is already looking a lot better it's more split up more compact easier to read it may not be 100 percent accurate so we have to be careful and we have to make sure that it works i would say first thing to do is actually to come up with unit tests to make sure that every possible functionality is tested and then you can use ChatGPT to refactor and make sure that the tests pass. And that brings us to number six, which is adding unit tests. So we have this rectangle class, it's very simple, it takes in a length and a width and sets the length and width attributes to the input. And it has a method area, which just returns the length times the width. So let's paste this into ChatGPT and ask it to write tests for us. So pretty incredible. It has a test case for just testing the area, testing a zero area, for testing a negative length, and testing a negative width. And it has most of it all laid out properly. So again, you might need to modify the code a little bit to get it to work properly. But ChatGPT can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, and you just have to kind of supervise it to go in the right direction. And it saves you a ton of time. And finally, number seven, asking for help. So sometimes you get stuck or you don't know how to do something or you don't know how something works and you would normally have to go to Google, type it out, look through a bunch of pages and figure out how, but it's now a lot faster with ChatGPT. So for example, what's the best way to do token authentication for a Python API only application? So you can see that it, First of all, it gives an explanation and then it gives a code even for how to how to do it. So it has generate a unique token for each user, store the token securely, require the token for each API request, verify the token. And here's an example using the Flask web framework. Now let's say our question was a little more specific. I'm not seeing request headers from the front end in my Django API. Why? Very specific question, so let's see how it does. In my case, it was actually an issue with cores and ChatGPT helped me figure it out. It gave me a great list of possible issues and I just had to go through them and figure it out from there. So there you have it. That's how you 10X your coding with ChatGPT. If you enjoyed the video, please give a like and a subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you next time.